couch Dogs, me, guitar lessons Hey there, Ligand Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another installment in the never-ending fingerstyle rhythm pattern and exercise video series where every week we alternate between beginner, intermediate, and advanced fingerstyle lessons. So I'm gonna teach you two awesome, really awesome riffs. One is a Jesse Cook riff and one is a Brazilian guitar composition riff. It's taken from the middle of the riff so you can loop it as an exercise. But first, I think the dog wants to go, so, all right, go, go, go. Doesn't wanna stay for this one. So, um, you want to go too? Go. They're allowed to every now and then to not join me during the lesson. So, um, but they filled their part. They're, they were here. So, um, the first one goes like this. And then you can play a D minor or seven if you want. Okay, so you start by barring the fifth fret and you play the fifth string, okay, on five, the D uh, bass note. Then you play eight on the second string using the pinky and then you let it go and play five on the E string, which is the bar. Okay, it's supposed to be staccato. Okay, it's not supposed to be harmonized. Okay, this is wrong, it's not. Um, wrong for the expression, the original expression of the lick, I mean, you can do it if you like how it sounds. But the original uh, intention is, okay, staccato. Then you um, pull off from five, um, from six to five on the second string. Then the E string on five. Okay, so it's. Then you hammer on from six to seven on the third string. The bar is still on all the way. Then you play the E string on five. Okay, so it's eight, E string on five. Okay, let's call it A because this is the A note. So, eight on the second string, A. Then, not like this, like this. Then pull off from six to five on the second string, A. Then hammer on from six to seven on the third string, A. Then a hammer on from five to six on the second string, then A again, then seven on the third string. Okay, that's the lick. Then you want to keep the bass note ringing as much as you can. Okay, the bass note is still ringing very faintly, but it still does. That's why you keep the bar on. Okay, now I know that you can do it with the open D string and then just bar strings one, two, and three, but that's the easy way and why cut yourself some slack? You want to be better at guitar, so work harder at it. So you can do it like this. Um, see, I can't do it. But it's the easy way, and choosing the easy way never leads to good results. Um, and anyway, you need to have the bar on on the next chord, so why not just play the bar all the way? Okay. Then the next um, riff is exactly the same, but instead of a minor chord, now this was D minor. Um, and you have the minor note on six on the second string. Now it's C, so you have, okay, it's C major, so you have five on the second string. So everything is the same except for the note um, half a tone above the bar on the second string. You play a tone above the bar. So it's this. Don't worry, I'll explain it. Okay, instead of a minor note, it's a major note. The original uh, fingering, if played on C, would produce C minor. And we want C major, so instead of four on the second string, we play five. Okay, you got what I'm trying to say? If not, here's a breakdown. Bar on three, three on the fifth string, six on the second string, then three on the E string, G. 
That's our pedal note this time. So six on the second string, G. Then uh, five pull off to three on the second string, G. Hammer on from four to five on the third string, G. Hammer on from three to five on the second string, G. Then five on the third string. Now uh, we have B flat over G. So you can treat it as G minor over B flat, but who cares about the chord name? Uh, what matters is the exercise. So it's this. Right? You put your third finger on three on the sixth string, the G bass note. You play it. Then you play zero one on the E string. But when you play one, you bar the second string along with it. Okay, so you have the C note ready on the second string. Okay, bar strings one and two. Then this. Okay, pull off from three to one on the second string. Then one on the E string, which is an F note. So. Zero, 1 on the E string, then pull off from 3 to 1 on the 2nd string, F, then a hammer on from uh, 2 to 3 on the 3rd string using your 2nd finger and the pinky, okay, then F, then uh, this, a hammer on from 1 to 3 on the 2nd string, then F, then 3 on the 3rd string, okay, this is a bit uncomfortable. but you get used to it. Then you do this. Okay? So it's okay, three pull off to two pull off to zero, then two again on the third string. Then three hammer on to five on the fourth uh, string, then two, then open fourth, then three one zero on A. Okay? So basically, this is a very, very, very smart rendition of the chord progression cliché, which is the Spanish chord progression. This is very, very smart. Um, so um, it ends on the A bass note leading back to D minor. Now um, again, okay, 3, 2, 0, 2 on the third string. Um, three five two on the fourth, then open fourth three one zero on A, and then you start again or end on D minor or D minor seven, which is just D minor without the pinky, with five on the third string. So that's our first exercise for this lesson. exercise uh, is a snippet I took from a Brazilian guitar composition, a terrific composition called uh, something like Sons de Carillos or something like that. I don't know Portuguese, uh, so I don't know how to read that age in the word. So um, um, it's, uh, it's a snippet that you can loop around and just play it indefinitely until you're sick of it. Um, and it sounds like this. Start by this awesome arpeggio. Okay, this is a D6 arpeggio. So you start with five pull off to two on the E string, then three on the second string, four pull off to two on the third, four on the fourth, five on the fifth. Okay, so right, now this is D6 because um, just very quickly. C-shaped bar, bar on two, is D. Now C, if you add two on the third string, is C6. 
and if you add the high G note, you get C with a high G note, which is a part of the C chord. Okay, you have the open G string in it. So it's this, okay, uh, with all of the additional notes, just up two frets. Okay, it's the C shape with the high A note and the sixth of the D chord. Hope you can hear it now. Um, if not, really doesn't matter. You can trust me on that. Then you bar the second fret, you play strings one, two, three, and six, then the same on one, then open. This is a chromatic move into E minor, so then you can put on E minor if you want. Then uh, you can play the chord along with it. Uh, you play zero, two, three on the second string. Again, it's, um, it's done with the pinky because you slide it into the next chord. Um, so you can play the chord any way you want with this. Okay, and then you slide it from 3 to 7 and you complete this. 7, 6, 7 on strings 2, 3, and 4 with the open A bass string. And this is your chord, it's A6. So from D6 to E minor to A6. Um, so um, it sounds like this, okay? And again, you can play the chord any way you want. I just play the A bass after, after I slide. I play the A bass, giving myself time to put the rest of the chord on, six and seven on strings three and four. Then I just play the rest of the chord, so, okay, or, okay, just an arpeggio or just the bass and then the chord again, okay, every time, I play it, I play it a bit differently. That's the whole fun in it. Um, then you play this. Okay? It's um, open E string. Okay? You can play it with the chord. Okay? Or not. So it's... Okay, and then the E string. Then five on the E string. That's why you have your first finger open, because you want the chord to keep ringing while you uh, close the chord. Okay? So... Then seven on the second string, and then you have options. You can finish on the open second string, and then it would sound like this. And then you play E minor again. You can finish on the open E string. And then you play the E minor chord again. Or you can finish on two on the second string, and then you have E minor six. So it's, okay? So uh, you can loop it around. The first time, play it with the open second string. Second time, play it with the open E string. Third time, play it with two on the second string and see how that feels. So that's your exercise. Now let's recap because I'm pretty sure I've confused you by now. So E minor. Open second string, E minor. Again. Open E string. Okay. E minor six. Sounds a bit different every time, so you can just loop it around and enjoy. and so forth. 
um, and those are your exercises for today so before you go subscribe to my channel if you haven't already I've got a ton of lessons already on the channel and I upload new ones every couple of days or so so what have you got to lose click subscribe and join the Lick and Ref community in the description below you'll find the link to the tabs and the website everything is for free of course the lessons the tabs everything but if you want to give something back to the lessons uh, to the lessons to Lick and Ref to making the lessons um, and help produce the lessons everything goes right back into the lessons you've got a donation button right above the tabs you can't miss it and as I said everything goes right back into your guitar education um, into making time to making these lessons for you so um, thank you very much for watching I'll see you the next lesson you enjoy these uh, exercises and just have fun with them that's the whole purpose of this to have fun so um, have fun bye for now